really, I mean, this is just an intro chat about uh, an idea that's kind of popped up and the reason why it's popped up, I'll kind of explain as well or why it's even being considered to look at. Um, it's, uh, there, there's more to it. So keep in mind, this is not like something that we're going to immediately change. It's not like your blueprints are worth any less or anything like that. It's just, there's a, an idea that we have and we want to kind of see what the community thinks on it. So <clears throat> if you do want to come up on stage, uh, I believe you should have, or there should be an option to uh, raise your hand. <clears throat> you should see it down in the bottom. You can come up and ask questions. We'll try and save it till the end and we'll try and get through this pretty quickly. Just like I said, I mean, I've done very little preparation for this. Uh, you know, I've, I've kind of laid out how Immersus works in general, you know, came up with, you know, some, some written stuff for myself to kind of get through it. But other than that, <clears throat> we're just going to kind of start from from why it's even being considered, all right? So um, so first off, obviously we have this big uh, issue with the game where we want to be moving uh, our networking solution from a, a cloud-hosted service that we use and their uh, like high-level networking solution to our own open source, uh, self-hosted server, um, and there is really going to be a, a significant, you know, journey uh, in making that happen, right? So there's going to be a time where we're putting the game on pause. And while the game is on pause, as far as content development, um, we are going to be, uh, the project's pretty much locked to cat to uh, make the transition from Photon to, uh, to, 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 Fish Network is what it's going to be called. It's an open source uh, Unity uh, networking solution uh, that we're going to kind of, you know, obviously figure out what works and what doesn't work. You know, there are certain uh, components of, of Photon that we do believe are going to be an issue in this transition over. Um, and it's to the point where we feel like we're almost kind of starting the project uh, we're most likely going to start the project fresh and, and pull components in one by one and make sure that they're compatible with fish, fish network rather than put fish network in because that's what we've been doing the past week. And it's been a little bit of a struggle where we're bringing fish network in and then, tr and then it's actually conflicting with a bunch of stuff in the project. And we're not even able to actually start touching fish network. We're kind of stuck in this uh, situation where like, we, we kind of need to like be able to work with something to start learning how Fish Network works. And it's almost easier to start the project over, get rid of all the bloat, make it easier for us, learn the processes from the ground up. And I think Kat, by the end of it, will have a much better understanding of how the whole project works, the whole architecture of the app. And, and this will be from essentially the networking uh, to, the, to the game application, to servers, everything, right? So it'll just be... Uh, and it'll just be a much lighter project at the end of the day. So you're not downloading six gigabytes, right? Um, there's a lot that we can kind of offload at this point in the project because it's just kind of this, this big, big thing at this point. So so what this means is that we do have some some downtime uh, to work on the the structure of how the game is actually working and, and comparing, you know, what, what's working with versus what's not necessarily working. Uh, and we've definitely transitioned to more of like an MMORPG style where I feel like there's the gathering, there's the crafting, there's the killing, there's the RPG elements that will be coming with quests and stuff like that. But there's also like uh, this weird mechanic, at least I consider it weird currently, with blueprints. I think blueprints are very, very uh, like... They're core to the game as it stands right now. You go in there and you can and play it and then you find these blueprints kind of randomly. And if you find them, then you can kind of craft something, but more often than not, you can't really craft it because there's so many other blueprint blueprint dependencies uh, that, that you're never really able to actually do the crafting without either some type of help or, uh, you know, there's, it, it's almost just like 
you could play the game and never accomplish anything, right? And I think that's the thing that I don't like is when you're coming in here, a lot of the times you're just kind of playing and, and taking a gamble at the chance of actually being able to do anything further in the game. Um, and that's that's kind of the structure of, of blueprints in their current state is you, there there's kind of, a new player comes in, right? A new player comes in and they have one of two options, right? They're, they're either gonna earn NFTs uh, playing the game and extract them for fate, right? Uh, and they're gonna do that on repeat until they can finally start participating in the other aspect of the game, which is the crafting aspect of the game, which could, you know, the time it takes a new player to get to uh, being able to craft in the game, could be like three seconds if they get super lucky, or it could be months to years. You know, I mean, in, in all honesty, because there's no there's no actual built-in progression in the game currently, right? There's there's nothing to do with the resources that you're earning. Just naturally, it's all almost uh, essentially locked behind. Uh, you know, this this extremely rare chance that you can continue playing the game, right? And that's that's what the blueprints do. Now, they were initially released because, you know, it, it was a primitive way to, you know, uh, you know, create a crafting thing just because we didn't have the resources that we did back then to to create a, a real crafting, uh, you know, component to the game where uh, you are able to craft everything and earn XP and it all be stored on the blockchain. So that's why the blueprint system exists. It was just the easiest thing that was available to us at the time on blockchain. And because things have developed since then, uh, and there's just, you know, more resources that we can look at to, to solve these problems, we could, we could look at all alternatives, right? So when we do blueprint crafting, it, it, it just feels like it's half the game's gate kept, right? Off of just a random chance. So there are some things that, that, that are a result of blueprints that, that could be deemed either good or bad, right? The, the first one that I kind of went into is, you know, players will kind of own these few NFTs and be able to create and craft a few NFTs, which in theory is supposed to create, you know, some supply, some demand, um, but it doesn't ever guarantee, you know, guaranteed progress in the game, which in my opinion, from a game standpoint, it's, it's just not the best experience, right? And then once they do find the blueprint, right, um, there's more often than not, somebody has already found that blueprint before you. So its whole use case, which is essentially to allow somebody to craft something, you know, more often than not, you're either reaching out to somebody to have it crafted for you or, you know, and they're doing it for free just as long as you exchange the resources for it or you're taking your blueprint and crafting it once, right? So the blueprint is being used, I mean, the usage of it is very low, right? It's it, it it's minted infinitely. It just essentially creates these small cycles of pretty much pumps in, in resource utility and then dumps in, in the price of resource utility, depending on, you know, um, you know, how many people need an item. And that does come with one good thing, right? In the fact that, um, because it's really not ever worth it to craft and it, and it's technically getting worse and worse to craft because there's an aspect to it where you can stake your crafted NFTs for like 40k fate, but that portion doesn't scale very well as we get more and more players into the game, right? That 40k fate, at some point you'll be earning like 0 0.02 fate and you may never get like, if you're treating it as if you're getting a return on, on your craft investment, it, it just never, it, it probably will never make sense, right? So, so the incentive to craft isn't a great incentive, right? Um, and then the the only positive that I can really see out of this is that it does um, it does just inherently keep the supply of crafted items much lower, right? Because because there's no demand, and because there's a fee, and because you're probably never going to get uh, staking rewards that amount to anything that you put in to actually create the craft. You're only really crafting them if somebody comes and asks you or if you need it yourself. And then beyond that, you're really, I mean, you could be crafting it, right? If you're so far ahead in the stake game, it might be worth it. But for a new player, it really doesn't make sense for you to start partaking in that part of the game. So what ends up happening is we resort back to the second and only other option that you have for all your NFTs, which is extracting them, or I guess in the other case, 
you know, listing them on the decks at this point, right? But why would you, why would you do anything other than participate in fate extraction, right? In, a, in the current meta. And then the worst part about it is in the current meta of fate extraction, you're only participating in the lowest tier of extraction, right? Because it's the most, it makes the most sense. You're getting the most NFTs, you're extracting the most fate. Um, so we've kind of put ourselves in this weird position where we have these blueprints that do create these weird pump and dump use cases for uh, the resources. And the resources do become, you know, useful for a small period of time until the demand is met. And then every other NFT that ever comes into the game is essentially just us buying back the NFT, right? Which is kind of like, it's just a weird, it's a weird game loop, right? It, it, it feels like you're just going in there to click a button and it feels like a clicker game, right? Because there's not that additional portion where you're coming in and gaining XP for producing something with the resources that you're uh, earning because you're only able to do that on this weird off chance, right? And then there's not even something that tracks your progress. It's it's just a purely RNG based, you know, mechanic, right? So that's that's why right now I just feel like the blueprint mechanic isn't really rewarding a player like it's not creating a, a rewarding player experience where they could feel like they're actually progressing towards crafting their own stuff it just feels like this weird i don't know it's just it, it feels weird at the current time so this is where i'm kind of at with the idea and i kind of want to get into you know why i think the route of you coming in minting nfts and then being able to craft you know, and level up these production skills is a better, you know, more natural, you know, path for a player to come in is first off, I think uh, being able to, you know, burn resources to create uh, an item and be rewarded in an experience, uh, you know, should help with uh, the massive, you know, extraction and sell off of fate, right? So if, if resources now have a value in experience, then technically those resources should provide more value to the people gathering them, right? Because, uh, you know, there's inherently going to be this second use case or technically this huge additional use case to every resource in the fact that it's not just the low tier resources that are going to be crafted. It could be any tier resource that you gather in the game can now be crafted because it would provide a better uh, experience uh, return uh, for making the crafts. So you're, you're, you're incentivized to do the crafts in more ways than just the 40k daily fate that doesn't really matter at the end of the day, right? The incentive uh, to do your craft is you get now experience, which you can now level up uh, and then be able to craft, you know, more unique things for your account and actually progress the account, right? So, so it gives you that, that sense of progression. Um, and then, uh, the other part about this is, and, and this is, this is the part where I think what blue glue said in general does kind of come across as like a little different from right now, right? In the current blueprint system, we are almost essentially guaranteeing that the person that's doing the craft has played the game, right? They've, they've come in and they've played the game. However long that is, it could be three seconds, it could be 10 months. We have no real gauge, right? But that's that's essentially how it works. But if we were to do something where there is a production skill that is on the blockchain, then in theory, there could be players that are, you know, purchasing up resources and then um, crafting uh, to earn experience unlocking certain skill levels so that they can craft items inside the game. Um, what this does do for players like you guys is this is a clear injection of value into the game, right? These are players that are essentially, if they are taking real world value and pouring it into the game to get uh, some kind of, you know, skill or speed, you know, experience without actually having to play the game to get the resources themselves to do the crafts. So more often than not, they're going to actually not be able to extract as much value out of the game 
than they put in, which should benefit the players that are actually playing the game, right? And the fact that you are going in there, you're gathering your resources, there's a higher demand for those resources since there's a lot more uh, or a more impactful use case for them and the fact that every resource has some type of XP tied to it. Um, right now, they don't have an XP tied to them. They just have a, a craft that you could potentially make if you have the blueprint. But this allows people that have the skill level to buy resources, craft something, which if you are the player in the game gathering resources, you can be using them yourself to get experience or you could be uh, selling them since there should be a higher demand because of their use cases to a player that maybe doesn't have a computer uh, but wants to level up and try and get on the high scores for you know one of these production skills that's a little bit more outside of the game. So uh, what are potential disadvantages that I could see of this is obviously um, there's going to be more uh, oversupply of the crafted items, right? So just if anybody can craft anything, then you would expect that there's going to be a lot more bronze bars, you know, upon release of this, right? Because people are going to take their their uh, tin and copper that they're earning, and then they're going to be, uh, you know, turning it into or burning it and turning it into uh, a bronze bar. And now there's a bronze bar, right? But you may not have the production level to turn the bronze bar into like a sword or a piece of armor or uh, a pickaxe or an axe, right? So, um, it, so you might have to make multiple bronze bars, right? In order to reach the point where you could do it yourself or you can now actually craft it, but then somebody else has the skill level to actually turn the blue, like turn the, the bronze bar into a pickaxe or, or an axe or what have you. And they want the XP, so they buy the, the bronze, you know, things. And then, so even though it isn't over, you know, even though there's going to be more crafted items, they technically still have more use case because there's an experience element to even the the crafted items. Uh, so you can kind of progress up the chain and get more and more experience as you complete, you know, rare and rare crafts um, or higher and higher tier crafts. Um, the, the other part of this is that, you know, this should help uh, or I, I would like to hope that this actually helps uh, the pure, you know, just... Uh, the, the, the pure fact that the only real gameplay in the game right now for like new players is to come in, gather an NFT and burn it for fate, right? Like that's the only thing that they're doing in the game until they get enough fate to, to participate in, you know, playing with a new tool, right? But if they could also be on the, on the way working up to a tool, I mean, hopefully this cuts down their time to get a tool too, right? Because let's say they come in and they're, they're uh, gathering hemp and then they're crafting their hemp into a string and then uh, people are taking the string and and crafting it into you know cloth armor or leather armor or what have you because there's experience rewarded to them for doing that and it's because it's in a particular you know production skill they, they're looking for that particular item uh, hopefully what it does is it allows for you know them to choose that route which feels more like a game than rather than coming in clicking a button gathering a bunch of nfts taking it, extracting it because there's no reason to have the NFTs in the first place because there's no crafting element that they can access when they first come into the game, right? Um, so then what they're doing is they're just burning the NFTs, taking the energy, or, or burning the NFTs, taking the fate, selling the fate, stealing the liquidity that you guys are providing into the wax fate pool if you're participating in that. And then, you know, they, they, they may never progress past that, right? But... Um, if we can get them playing a game rather than just feeling like they're they're coming in here to you know mint the pennies and uh, you know the pennies worth of NFTs, then I feel like we're we're creating a little bit more of a dynamic uh, you know experience. Um, and then uh, yeah, I mean that's 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 my logic on it. So that's why it's even being discussed. Uh, let's see here. So. Hemp world, I'm reading what you're saying. So if you guys have any comments or if you want to come up on stage, uh, just raise your hand and we'll, we'll open it up and, and bring people up here. It uh, looks like uh, Coach and Cruel Angel. So I don't know who put their hand up first. I wasn't 
on this particular page, but I'm going to bring up a, a coach first and then uh, we can kind of move from there. I just got to figure out how I bring somebody up. All right. I invited you to speak if you want to come up. All right. How's it going, coach? What's going on? Good. Good. Just try. Hopefully I wasn't breaking up. I know sometimes or last time I tried to do something like this, I was breaking up a lot. So hopefully everybody heard yeah, me. It came, it came through clear. So, um, I mean, there's a lot to unpack with everything that you just laid out there. Um, and it would take a long time. But the, the big focus on this is the blueprints. Um, right now, they don't serve enough utility to, to hold weight and function within the game it seems to be the problem um, no matter how the problem is solved you cannot take the blueprints out of the game um, I too ma in a nutshell taking the blueprints out of the game is going to come off more like taking them from the players so in some way there has to be a new there has to we you have to find a way to add utility to the blueprints instead of just outright creating something to replace them. Okay. I mean it, it was obviously going to be a concern, right? I mean the blueprints are how everybody does things right now. I mean we can approach it in a couple different ways. I mean some of the suggestions that I've gotten from people is that the blueprints just function as they do, right? I mean, there's, they don't do much, right? So we could just allow you to craft them, right? Uh, without needing the level to craft them, right? Um, but now this is, that's this just, isn't... that's, they don't really do much other than allow you to craft, right? So if we allow blueprints to still exist inside the game, I mean, we can still add a sense of progression and still have them as a drop. I think you know, dropping rarer materials and, and creating more interesting, you know, crafts um, that, that fill up the, the crafting tree of, of, you know, the, the leveling up portion of it, you know, is going to still fulfill the same, you know, sense of you getting a rare drop. But yeah, I mean, of the ideas that have been pitched to me, I think the idea that if you find, if we keep blueprints in the game, then and still to continue to go the skill route, then they would just be these rare drops that allow you to avoid the need to progress uh, via skilling. You would just be able to craft them as you normally do right now. Um, but to give up the experience portion of it, um, which could potentially obviously inject value into players uh, for people that are maybe not in the game, but just want to participate in the production side of the thing um, or uh, just add, you know, a reason to craft in the game other than just for yourself or when somebody DMs you and asks you to craft um, because there's this, this skill aspect to it. Uh, you know, I think, I think you can have both is basically what I'm getting at. I just yeah, now, still, me, uh... Yeah, me kind of taking a definitive stance on them being gone or not isn't me coming out against the whole idea of a blacksmithing skill. I think that's a great layer. Um, I don't see why the blueprints still can't serve as the function they do. Maybe they don't have to be as rare as they previously been, but the idea is that the blueprints are how you can craft the raw material into craftable materials. But just because you have things that you can build stuff with, you still have to know how to build things. And that's where this whole skill system could add a huge dynamic. Now everybody's out there farming. But I feel like with the blueprints kind of being the foundation of what Immersus has been since day one, and with as many changes for as many reasons, good or bad or then, doesn't matter, with as many changes that have happened in the game, that one, I mean, I feel like that one's too big. You know, um, personally, just to personalize it, I mean, I've got a couple dozen blueprints and I've been grinding to get them for what the past year and a half, you know, and there's a lot of things that I've bought and I've acquired while in Immersus and um, for my blueprints to no longer hold weight or have utility or essentially not be what they were when I got them. 
that's huge. You know, um, I don't, you know, they don't have to be as rare. Maybe they could be more plentiful. People could get them more because really the idea now is to build up the skill to actually craft something. But the blueprints could still be how you get those materials to craft. You know, I just, there's a lot of people that have a lot of blueprints and they've, they've spent so much time getting these blueprints and it's really been the whole drive of their immersion. I just to remove that. And I understand everything that you're saying. But um, yeah, to remove that, it's, it's, I just, I, in my opinion, it's too big. I do like the idea of adding the whole, this whole blacksmith and skill level. I think that that's something that could should have happened a while ago. But I don't think at the expense of, you know, what we currently have. Yeah, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to understand about blueprints is, is where. Like, what is the value of them to you other than a sign that you've, you know, like, we, we can't gauge whether it took you a long time to get or if it took you a little time, right? Like, because right. of how random they really are. So they're not really yeah, a badge of honor of like, oh, well, like, I've earned something that's, that's hard to get. I mean, it is, like, from a statistics, like, part where, like, we know that they're tough to get, but, like, we don't know that it was tough for you to get. Right. So, okay. So right. they, they don't do a great job of, of, you know, determining that what they did do a good job of doing is, is essentially making sure that you had played the game to, yeah to craft, right. You, you'd played the game to craft, but the same fulfillment happens if you're playing the game and gathering resources and leveling up the, the crafting skill that allows you to craft something, right. You have a stat that would be a direct reflection, uh, it, you know, depending now other people could buy this skill, right? If we were to, to make it a production skill, other people can buy the skill, but you yourself would have, uh, you know, something that is a re reflection of the fact that you played, used the resources that you did to level up a skill. And now because you level up that skill, you can craft things. And that that's why there is a way that I see blueprints potentially fitting in here. If, if, it's just more of like a way to get around requiring a level for you to craft the item, right? Like maybe it's just something that you found the recipe and you no longer need to become a, you know, uh, you know, a novice or, or an apprentice and, uh, you know, and, and work your way up to, you know, whatever, a master of, of, of crafting something. Maybe it's just a way that, you know, you've, you've specialized or have a certificate that, you know, enables you to craft this item without the need to level up the skill. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it could be, you know, still a big, big deal in that way. But right now I just don't feel like it's providing, like I have blueprints too, but I don't feel super attached to them because I know that like, I don't use them. Right. Like they just kind of, I got them when I got them, they were exciting. Um, but for the most part, I've either gone out to the market and bought it from somebody else because the, you know, sup, you know, the demand for the items are so low at times that people are dumping these items at way lower than a cost than I would, you know, take me or the amount of time I want to spend in the game to, to get the resources. And I've had either other ways of acquiring uh, fate that are better. So I just go and buy them. Right. So that's, that's my issue with them is I, I just, I feel like we're missing out on a half of a gameplay because of just this weird blueprint mechanic that I'm not sure is, 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 uh, I hear what you're saying. And that, that whole perspective caters really to your style of gameplay. Um, I just, I'm not confident that I think that other players have different experiences. I think to a lot of the players, the blueprints do mean like it's a big deal to them as random as they are. Um, I don't know, you know, and that's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm, I'm trying to gauge, you know, what, what people's thoughts are on it, but, um, yeah, I mean, right. But again, it's being, it's being considered. I mean, like I said, I think the, the, <laughs> the combined mesh of this is, is essentially blueprints exist, but they just avoid the skill side of things, right? They achieve the same thing. Um, without any interruption or without the sacrifice of the experience portion of adding value to the, to the items that you're earning in the game. Right. Right. 
Yeah, and I don't want to come out firing shots. You know, I'm team immersive from day one. Yep, but I know, I know. Definitely, definitely want to be honest about it, and you know, I only mildly held back. But you know, I appreciate <laughs> you letting me talk, and I'll hop down and let everybody else say what they have to say. Cool. All right, we'll bring up Cruel Angel just because Cruel Angel was the uh, next person that I saw. I sent the invite to speak, Cruel. If you want to come up. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Oh, fine. Uh, I'm sorry for not uh, perfect English. Um, uh, I think we are uh, closer to remove uh, blueprints from the game because uh, many, many templates which uh, still need blueprints available for uh, tokenized NFT on the swap. And uh, it's uh, work cheaper than uh, actually Atomic Hub or other uh, markets, so not worse anymore to craft uh, 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 any NFT. Uh, and the list of tokenized NFT is increasing day by day, nearly. So, so I think blueprints still uh, need uh, in the game, but uh, must be work like uh, like uh, travel network. So uh, the rare. Blueprint can be buy for fate. Uh, I mean, like 5k to 50k. And, and that's why I, I, I think that the, the new companion ups uh, made uh, useless. Uh, these NFTs, uh, I mean, these uh, blueprints, uh, which are already available in tokenized NFT. I mean that is another good good take on it. I mean the Dex has made a lot of this essentially useless, right? Because now you could gather the resources, sell them directly to the Dex and completely and obviously extract probably close to the same amount of value or equal to the craft that you were going to make originally. Um which kind of you've circumvented the whole blueprint system altogether, which that is true. So the blueprints, they, they, they've been diminished almost in a way from, from in that standpoint as well. Uh, there's, there's the Dex that is helping you avoid it. Now the Dex will help you avoid having to level up your skills at the same time, right? I mean, there's, I don't think there's, I don't think that that, that makes a case for skills, but I, I do think that is another you know, reason why blueprints seem to maybe have lost a little bit of, you know, of their lusters is because of that ability for you to just take the same resources, chuck them on the exchange and get the outcome, whether or not you had the blueprint or not really didn't matter from the beginning. Um, and that's, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Um, as far as the purchasing of blueprints uh, for fate, um, yeah, I mean, that's another potential way to handle it. It's, it, it feels a little more, you know, I don't what know. To win? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know how that, or what that. I'd have to think but, on that but, one a but, little but, bit more. But not, not more pay to win than, than, uh, give it to everyone uh, available craft without blueprint. So, yeah. and it's a profit for the game, for the players. So the, the thing that I do take from that is just the, the PTN part of it, which I, that is a route that we were thinking about going, right? Was, all right, there's this core idea that people owning the blueprint, there is some value obviously for every craft where somebody cre creates it. And then, you know, that energy cost or whatever it is could be then distributed across, uh, you know, all blueprint, blueprint owners. I think it works currently due to how low the amount of blueprints are in the game. But as we scale up and we get more players coming in, eventually some of these blueprints could have thousands of people that all have the same blueprint. Um, and to create a transaction on the blockchain where you're going to have to craft not only craft uh, the uh, <laughs> the item, but then also uh, in that same transaction send out uh, the uh, the payment to a thousand different wallets. I'm not sure that it. I'm not sure that it scales. Is is my issue with it? I'd have to talk to 
you know, our smart contract developer to see if it works. But the reason why that hasn't been implemented is really just the signing of the transaction to disperse technically an infinite amount of uh, uh, or fate to an infinite amount of potential owners of a blueprint. I'm not sure that anybody's going to have a C, you know, the CPU or the RAM or whatever, the CPU to, to perform that transaction. I'm not even sure that the blockchain allows for a transaction of that size to be done either. Um, PTNs are nice because it's one transaction. You're, you're buying from the shop and then it is essentially issuing out the token to uh, everybody in, in like uh, just a, a single transaction. Um, but they're also some of our heaviest transactions in the game um, uh, as far as CPU uh, goes. But it's only because there's 40 people that, that it can be done. Uh, well, one, one more thing. Uh, a few days ago, I got a brand leader uh, hood blueprint, and uh, it, it was it was easy. I just go uh, buy five tokenized uh, brand leader, not need to farm a uh, blueprint for that. I buy, switch back to NFT and craft for myself. Yeah. Yep. So, so in this view, we not need blueprints. All right. I mean, I, I, I think, I think the the meta of buying blueprints, I think, is what. Uh, uh, I don't like asking for crafts. I prefer to earn my progress. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I ask. Yeah. So blueprints, like the ability to purchase blueprints, you know, could be a potential use case and then a PTN functionality for them. We could also see what that looks like. Ask the developer if, if, if it's possible for that to scale properly, uh, for all blueprint owners, um, my concern is that they are non-transferable where PTNs are transferable as well. So the reason why you're able to stake the PTN initially, I, I think there's a couple things that we'd have to overcome. The PTNs right now, you I, do I, stake. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I mean the travel license, like the travel license. Like the travel license, yeah, yeah. But the blueprint owners would so, be so the you PTNs. So you can buy a blueprint, uh, it's still uh, your account bound, so you can't sell uh, it, but you can pay it for it. But uh, it can be secure the game uh, because not all the uh, crafter are... Uh, <laughs> So there are many scammers, and uh, and uh, if no blueprints needed, uh, no players uh, got scammed and and uh, and yes. leave the game. Yep, yep. And we don't know how many people have scammed people either. That's that's the weird part about it, right? Is it it's it's a mechanic that doesn't have a support system to make sure that there is transparency uh, from you know somebody that you're going to to, to actually make the craft, which. You know, it's it's just another thing on top of it that that feels like it's just, you know, it feels like it it, it feels like it's not a finished, uh, you know, or, or fully thought out mechanic long term, I guess. But yeah, I mean, I I agree in in some aspects, um, and I appreciate you coming up here and and uh, you know, giving your thoughts on it. That's kind of what we're trying to do today. Um, so I think we can, unless you have any other thing uh, that you want to mention, we can maybe bring up Monty next. Okay, thank you. I leave now. <laughs> All right, thanks, Cruel. Good night. All right, have a good night. Hello, Monty. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Just another day, another long day. How are you liking your first few days in the game? Uh, it's it's been pretty fantastic. So I uh, I mean obviously the grind is real. You yep. know, uh, going going on day four right now. So I do want to preface that obviously, uh, only four days in the game and uh, and it's it's pretty cool being able to be involved with the fact that they're they're you know it is uh, you know such a tight knit group that you know I, I see you constantly communicating here and everything like that. So I'm pretty excited. My brothers obviously talked a lot about the game and. Yeah, <laughs> uh, talked to you guys up a lot, so I uh, figured might as well get involved some. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, um, 
but yeah, so so kind of from from what I've heard, uh, I'm kind of looking at it as objectively as I can from from both from a new player perspective as well as just from my experience in in other MMOs and everything like that, uh, as well as trying to keep in mind the fact that obviously we're working with NFTs, everything like that, which which does add a little bit of of a of a twist to what the experience can and can't have or how it would function. Because like you said, you obviously have to work with our other parties on what is isn't allowed you know uh how the nfts function everything like that um i i like the blueprints i'll say at face value the idea of blueprints being in the game i i think is is good um i like the it adds something while you're collecting more than just the collectible itself right um, but what, what I will say is I feel like blueprints where they're at right now is very frustrating for, uh, any, any new player per se. Um, obviously for somebody like myself, it took me three days to find, let's say the string blueprint. Well, you know, some of these blueprints, such as I'm doing bug catching, right? Okay, cool. I want to get the next net. I have the tier one right now going around doing that continuously. Um, God only knows whenever I'll find that. Well, that that now limits my ability to play the game to literally RNG gods. Like, I just have to pr pray to the RNG gods, please one day give me that. With the exception of if I decide to, you know, spend money um, or invest my fate or things like that in, into, you know, requisitioning those those tools from, from somebody else. Uh, for me, I feel like an improvement uh, or maybe something to alternatively look at rather than getting rid of the blueprints, because I do agree, like people who have put in all the time into getting the blueprints, it, it would it would kind of suck to just have those just go away, become completely obsolete or non-existent. Um, but it almost feels like it if there's a way to make it where rather than the blueprints be what is required for basic progression having the blueprints be more non non mandatory for the progress of the game um such as you know i i hate to say this but whenever i look at mmos i always tell people my end game for 99 percent of mmos is cosmetic wars mm -hmm. it, you know um having things that aren't mandatory for the progress of the game but are kind of those those gloat factors or those, uh, you know, kind of what you can wear around, show off, things like that. And if blueprints could somehow be transitioned to where that was more where the focus was on them rather than in order for you to literally be able to do anything next, you have to find this RNG print. Um, along with the fact that because there are so limited enemies and things like that, obviously the loot pool gets kind of diluted on whether or not you even have a chance of getting the blueprints right now. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like if blueprints were to stay where they're at right now, what what I would like to see at least would be a system where you could engage in some kind of prioritization that kind of affects the loot pool to not guarantee you to get what you want, but to at least try and sway the loot pool to go towards what you want. Um, where if, like for my sake, if if I needed to be able to get a material crafting, I could put that on, you know, I know like the 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 bears, you know, drop a, a decent pool of blueprints, wolves drop a decent pool. If you could look at that and be like, okay, I've already gotten, you know, a, a helmet blueprint. I don't need that, but I need, I need you know, the boots. Okay, cool. I'm going to somehow select that through whatever system would be developed. And of course, I am I have no idea what that would look like. But then whenever that loop pool pulls, and if it pulls a blueprint, it would prioritize going the boots for your next, you know, chance of rolling that over what you already had. If, if that makes sense. It does. I, I mean, and just to make sure that I got the first point, you're saying blueprints may have to take a route that's more like, okay, you you have an item, but blueprints serve as more a cosmetic variant that, you know, makes yeah. it kind of just that, you know, that thing to show off, because, essentially. Because I, I agree. I like the fact that like a skill tree, like having something where you physically see this, you have this much experience of something. Awesome. That shows you have put time, you have put effort into getting that leveled up. You've crafted multiples of something. Plus, that unlocks the ability to make your basic tools what you need, your tier one, tier two, tier three, through repetition, right? Which I think is fantastic. That allows 
any player, regardless of investment or things like that, to have the ability to develop themselves without randomization, right? Like it gives you a straightforward path where you can look at any player and say, this is how you progress in the game, regardless of RNG. And then the blueprints would come into play and say, okay, you want to invest your time into the game. You want to be able to do those extra things. You want to show that you are an advocate for the game, things like that. You now have these blueprints where this is where you show the time you've actually put in by those RNG drops, now being able to show off what you've actually, you know, grinded into. Understood. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a... I don't know that it solves for all blueprints, but it definitely could potentially you know be a roadmap for future blueprints and the mechanic itself in general as far as i think your suggestion for keeping blueprints as are as they are in the game the ability to kind of essentially choose the drop that you're looking for um that way you can be grinding for still obviously a little bit of you know, an RNG aspect to it, but having a more focused, you know, grind session, like choosing something on the loot table to actually grind for, that's an interesting... Uh, yeah, and realistically, it wouldn't remove the percentage chance of drawing the things that you don't want, but it would, instead of, let's say, you had a 50-50 chance, instead, it would skew that to, like, a 60-40 chance. You know, something to kind of off-balance it, so you at least feel like, okay, if I'm dropping this, I at least know that the game at least knows that this is what I want. Now, does the game give it to me? Maybe not. You know, that's that's the wonderful world of RNG, but at least you feel like you have some power over what you're trying to do in that day's grind. Understood. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that's the whole goal, right. That I'm trying to achieve is just even through the skill aspect is, is provide the feeling that a player has some control, right? Like right now it very much feels like you don't have any control over your progression. I mean, it does, I guess the big question would be, do most people feel like a 60% chance versus, you know, uh, you know, a 60% chance is enough sense uh, that they can actually achieve progression in the game or not? I mean, that would be interesting to hear more opinions on um, because you're still letting it up to, to RNG. You just have a better chance at it and you've selected it. So does that feel like... Um, I don't know. That that's actually a really interesting suggestion. I, I I mean, it's it's out there as far as some of the other things that I've heard, um, which is cool because it's creative. Um, I'm just trying to see, and I feel like I'm I'm gonna just naturally have to think on it a little bit more to see, you know, does it still, does it, does it solve what I'm trying to solve for? Right, like for because, sure because it. I still think what cruel said makes a lot of sense, right? You're, you're avoiding the whole need for a blueprint in the first place, right? With the decks, right? You're, you're going to gather those resources, whether or not you find the blueprint before you have enough resources to buy the thing that you were looking for the blueprint for, you know, or not is, is solely based on RNG. So I, I mean, yeah, I'm just trying to, that's what I'm trying to, there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot to it. So I think that's what I'm trying to, to figure out. I mean, I love the idea of blueprints functioning as more of a cosmetic. Um, I think if it was released like that initially, perfect use case for them um, because it, it, it sort of makes sense. Um, you know, it, it, it's something that you find. It's, it's sort of like these, like, um, I don't know, these marks that you've, you've gotten some type of rare thing at a, at, you know, off of a, a kill or off of a grind. It's, it's like, I don't know, it's like a skilling pet or something like that, that, that you've gotten that you can, you know, upgrade what you look like and people will know uh, that, that this was either you got super lucky or you must have probably spent a lot of time doing this in order to get it. And it, and it fills that purpose, you know, pretty, pretty well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, any, I, I'm happy that you came up. Anything else that you think we should consider? I mean, in, in this, in this, um, 
Uh, I mean, as far as this topic, I, I think that's that's pretty much what I what I had to say. I mean, I'm trying to keep my eyes open. Like I said, I'm only four days in, so you know, bear with me. I still have plenty more of my own stuff to experience. Um, but you're the perfect example but, of the person that I'm I'm trying to make the change for. So if you're saying that blueprints are are kind of, you know, the thing that does kind of keep you grinding, and they do have some type of, you know, reward, then you know maybe that maybe maybe I'm I'm not yeah gauging it think, as properly as as i should i think they're good to see i think it's good to see that people that have invested the time obviously like the fact that they've invested the time and they have something to show for it i i just feel like um for for myself uh one of the things i was talking with my brother about is i'm like i'm like right now because of the way the system works and like i said the fact you have to have these blueprints to really make progression it would be hard for for me to go out there and really promote this to another person unless if somebody is willing to almost sponsor them into getting started yeah uh especially for like I i'm gonna be this is literally the first game that i have ever played that has anything to do with nfts like awesome. i have i have literally no knowledge of nfts outside of this game so um you know being able to you know, be part of this and be able to get feedback from from my side and and see it kind of as a player that doesn't normally look at you know whether it's the NFT value or things like that. I'm more so strictly looking at it objectively from the gameplay. It would be very hard to promote somebody that's like, oh, you don't do NFTs. Okay, well, come check out this game anyways. It's an MMO. This is how you can get into it. Right now, you almost have to look at it and be like, look you're going to need to invest and i don't know what that investment's going to look like because even i don't know yeah yeah right now it's a lot of time and uh potentially you know hope that you have somebody that can sponsor you i mean i think you summed it up pro like properly like for a new player that is their experience it's it's you know they they either inject a little bit of money in to in order to play it a little bit more full you know, like be able to do the gathering, uh, like the mining and the bug catching and things like that. Or they're sitting there gathering hemp for the end of time and and really not doing anything other than extracting fate and trying to overcome this this monumental mountain of acquiring 55k fate um, because the resources have, you know, essentially these one craft <laughs> life cycles where, you know, they the, the resources are not being used, uh, you know, in a, in a meaningful way. They're, they're essentially being bought back, um, but they're not being used to, to progress players' accounts, um, you know, as much as I would like that to be playing a role, I think is, is kind of... And I think that's, that's also why value of items is, is struggling. It's, it's, you're essentially just... It's a vicious cycle where you're coming in, gathering the hemp, burning the hemp for fate, selling the, the, the fate, uh, you know, for wax. And then you're just inherently devaluing what you're doing. So you're fighting this weird battle that you can't get ahead of, um, because you're, you're, you're actually losing, you know, more value than the, than you're able to produce over time. It feels like sometimes, but yeah, no, I appreciate you coming up here and talking. I think we'll move on to Hong Kong and see, <laughs> Their thoughts thanks, man. as well. Yep. Glad you're I appreciate it. it, man. All right. Thanks. And I'll get to the, the voice or the uh, chat messages here in a second after this. What's up, Hong Kong? We cannot hear you right now. Oh. There we go. It sounds like oh, you got I have, I have pushed the talk on. My bad. No, you're good. All right, so uh, I'm trying to think of a solution that would cater to you know everyone to keep the blueprints and to make them you know feel like you didn't lose all the time on them and shit. So wouldn't one of the solutions be? I mean, you can keep the blueprints as they are. You can add the crafting, and depending on how that's gonna look like and how complex it is, because I'm assuming you can make the same items that you can make with the blueprints now, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. So. You can have that as well, and then as a new player, you can start working on that. As an old player, you can start working on that, building up your crafting. But if you find the blueprint as they are now, your crafting gets completed. You know, you don't have to work towards it. So if you need level five for a bronze bar, you don't have to keep leveling up to level five if you find the bronze bar blueprint. Yeah, and I think that's... Higher levels is even harder to get the blueprints, so 
and you need the tools and you need the weapons to go and fight off and farm the things that you need the blueprint for. So it's still hard to get. Yep. And you still can craft in the meantime to get till there. Or if you just happen to get lucky to get a random blueprint, you're like, okay, well, I got that crafting done and I don't need that. And in the future of the game, I'm guessing more and more is going to get added. So you'll have still have something to go towards you. And then all the people who have the blueprints now can just have all the craftings done to that point. So you didn't waste your time finding these blueprints because, you know, now you have the crafting. Was it you that suggested it? I, I don't know who told me this, but then some, somebody, I mean, this is, I mean, that's what I was referencing. I mean, I think that is, you're getting the best of both worlds. You're not devaluing oh, yeah. players who have found the blueprints. You can still keep that mechanic in the game. Oh, yeah. They have a huge advantage against everyone else because they played the game for a year. So they should have a big advantage. Yeah. And I think and that's... To add to the prismatic side as well, if you want to make it even more complex, if you find the blueprint to complete your whole thing and you level up the whole crafting or find the blueprint after or whatever, but if you have the blueprint as well, you can add like a slight cue to your weapon or tool or whatever and make it more visually appealing. So it adds to that as well. So even if you have the crafting level all done, you might still want to find the blueprint just for that to, you know, be more visually appealing. Yeah. Yep. For the people who play for that. Yeah. I mean, I like that side of potentially blueprints. I mean, I feel like shards are supposed to be that, right? It's supposed to be shards the, are great, man. They're, they're useless right now, but yeah, I mean, they, they are supposed to sort of play that role um, for, I mean, they're essentially blueprints, right? They're just oh, yeah. they're just a a material that allows you to craft the the cosmetic variant of something. Um, well, yeah, that's we'll, that's what they were designed out, for from the, the the beginning. But yeah, I mean, I think you're on the same page as, as at least I am on what blueprints replacement could look like if we go this route, right? I well, it doesn't really look like a replacement because you just add crafting and you just add another thing that players can do and use materials for and the blueprints are just basically the same and the people who found them just have the crafting they've done the work exactly exactly that's what i mean like it, it's it's less of a change and more of just we're just adding you know another way to progress that's not pure rng based uh, you yeah. can grind or get lucky um and yeah so now you have both options because now you can only get lucky yeah <laughs> yeah so, all That's right. It for me. All right. Well, I appreciate it. I'll. Um, I guess what I'll do here is there anybody else that's looking to come up? Uh, if not, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of read through a uh, general uh, chat here. Thanks for everybody that did come up and provide input. Uh, let me just. I'm gonna. I really haven't been paying attention to any of it here. So, like Mount Doomy kind of likes the idea of them not being so rare. Um, but keeping them in the game, Joshua Mann says, I think blueprints are important and could still be implemented within a style of a system like that. I, I think, uh, I'm trying to remember what we were talking about at that time. Uh, maybe there's a base set of free crafting that you still, uh, need the blueprints to learn to craft, um, uh, with a minimum skill requirement. All right. Uh, whitelist holders of current blueprints. The whitelist could be a craft boost uh, that then could or could not be kept, uh, could not keep the RNG in the game. You can, yeah. You claim the craft boost NFT, which could upon craft grant any RNG a drop of the crafted item. Uh, a double boost if you're an OG blueprint holder. Just a thought. Yeah. Uh, blueprints for me is my meta to progress. I don't like being, I don't like uh, having to ask for crafts. I prefer to earn my progress by getting the next level blueprint. My honest opinion is lack of buyers since the lack of new people playing. Uh, the first reason why is the PC install requirement. There's a ton of people playing farming games uh, because it can be done in a Chrome tab, you ask, Nor. We <laughs> definitely true. I really think that if you're going to swap from service provider 
and uh, swap to another engine, a mobile version should be a priority since 90% of phones are more powerful than the average Windows PC and the lack of dedicated video card on most PCs uh, is filtering potential players. Payments can be done by user. So cost is done by user. Yeah. Uh, really, it seems like there's either a skill lock for crafting or coming down to RNG blueprints. Uh, drops or drops for blueprints. Tools keep the blueprints. Tools can keep the blueprints, but for example, cosmetics, you'd have to own all clothes, bronze blueprints to craft bronze melee weapons. Sorry, I'm just trying to, I feel like I'm getting these as you had put them in the chat. So like some of them are not really making sense fully. Um, Mount Doom, he says, my last blueprint drop was June 16th, and it was a duplicate, so it was just a shard. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm trying. Uh... Maybe consider dynamic limits to the number of blueprints the game can generate based on a fraction of the currently active population. I mean, one blueprint can supply the entire population, though. Um, I don't think we need to limit blueprints. I mean, blueprints are already significantly limited, right? They are, they're scarce, so I don't think we need to set any more limits on, on blueprints. Um, all that would do, in my mind, is just prevent more people from from playing because they feel like they have to go to somebody else to progress. Uh, has Mercer's backed into a corner where you can get rid of blueprints outright without pissing off old players, but also not helping new ones. Uh, I started three months ago and in that time I never got a bronze bar blueprint. If I decided to take this, as a solid journey, it would have it would have ended there as I wouldn't have been able to progress beyond tier one. All in all, blueprint rarity for lower tier feels insanely high in my experience. The one thing I do want to put out really heavily is that blueprints create a social aspect social aspect to the game in a way, and was one of the things that did attract me here. Well, that's good feedback. Would like to see blueprints become less rare if the skill system is added. Having the skill level um, to build with your blueprint items, especially low tier ones. Uh, is there a channel for the call where I can write? Uh, this, I mean, general chat's the best place to write. Um, you should check out the Lee Crafting uh, Service, Monty. Yeah, this one, someone said hemp. Can confirm it's a good idea. All right, Epa, Michael. Uh, what about the what about swapping the function? Rusty tools can serve for all tier resources. Axe can chop all tiers, but crafting them you gather faster. Tier one, three seconds. Tier two, six seconds. Yeah. Okay. Uh. That seems better than needing to get lucky and grind. I see what you're saying. I don't know how you meant to come off here. Um, uh, bite. Uh, 
but the so when you say you either get lucky or you grind that seems better than needing to get lucky and grind um are you uh saying that i guess can you clarify that for me <laughs> Needing to get lucky to get the blueprint, yes, yeah. Raising the blueprint drop rates or drop rate increases as you don't get. Yeah. Set up a crafting skill so the blueprint unlocks the re recipe to do and require a minimum skill level for each recipe. Need level five woodwork to craft a pine plank and so forth. I don't have the bronze bar blueprint and if I ever get it, that's okay because I can buy the bars on the swap and build my bronze cabinets and so on. And then Michael said, if we could choose the next blueprint to drop, that would help a lot. The idea that it doesn't have to be 100% the template that you want is really good. So you don't get the blueprint 100%, but maybe 60. Yeah. It should go up after not getting the blueprint And this goes on until you have a 100% chance. That would stop a lot of frustration. Okay. <clears throat> so basically you're, you're working on a progress bar towards something, which just sounds like the skill in general, but we're minting an NFT as well, which, yeah. I just still feel like one is going to provide more value for your, your resources than the other. Still, at the end of the day, I think whether we try and figure out a solution for uh, keeping blueprints in, I think it's clear that we do need to work blueprints into staying into the game. I think that's that's what we got from the the, the call today. End of the day, though, I still feel like resources do not see any value other than um, you know, a single craft in, in the current meta, uh, which is to overcome uh, the amount of infinite NFTs that come into the game. Uh, I feel like we need a use case that's, that, that potentially provides a more straightforward path of progression in the form of you gather, you craft, you gain XP, and then with that XP, you're able to craft things in the game. So you're not praying to RNG gods in order to, to progress. And what that should do is because now every item has a value that that is, you know, coming in the form of experience, it should hopefully, you know, it should just make... <laughs> Hopefully the time in the game more valuable. I, I think that's that's this that's the second part of this problem. I'm trying to find ways to make NF like make your NFTs and resources that you gather in the game something that are not one time uses, you know, as you find the blueprint that might have taken you either three seconds or ten years, right? Um because beyond that, every resource is just going straight to extraction. Yeah. And if this is, you know, yeah, there's, there's something there, right? There's something.
There's something up there. Yeah, I mean, we we sum, we somewhat provide that market value through the fade extract, right? But the fade extract doesn't help our case because the fade extract is only only rewarding the tier one <laughs> resources, right? So no 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 craft, no nothing else, nothing else in the game uh, is is benefiting, right? The the only thing the only there's there's no reason to progress by the time you've killed the free stuff or gathered, you know, um, uh, you know, birch logs and hemp, you've, you've essentially accomplished top tier, best money maker, best, you know, equipment that you'll need to actually play the game. And it really shouldn't really be that way. Uh, in all honesty. Correct. Exactly, Michael. Or just get rid of... I agree with what Monty said. This is... I mean, I, I, I feel like I've always been, for the most part, this... This... You know, I I depend on your guys' feedback. I mean, from the player poll to, to everything. I mean, it is your guys' game as much as it's my game. Um, and I think uh, it's important to know what people are thinking because... I don't know it all. I don't try to pretend like I know it all. I think I like to hear, you know, people's uh, thoughts before jumping in on, on things. I, I tend not to make the decision by myself. Um, uh, and XP is huge to a lot of people. I mean, XP is personally huge to my gaming experience, especially if I'm spending time grinding in a game. Um I like to feel like I am, I have something that represents a, a true, you know, show that I grinded, right? Um, I think right now, combat does it extremely well, and I'm happy with the current status of combat. I'm just not convinced that, um, you know, the resources that you gather are being properly represented. I think your gathering skill does, but... I mean, it, it, it really doesn't play much of a factor in, in progression other than, you know, being able to get to a higher tier. But it, it's, uh, I mean, there's not even a reason to get to that next tier because everything below that next tier is worth more. 103 shards. Yeah, Mr. Best. I mean, that's the number one player of the game. That's who I want to hear his opinion. He's probably got the most blueprints. That's who we need to get up on the stage. But, um, yeah. We get the two extremes. We get Monty, who, uh, who's who got four days gameplay, uh, game time, versus Mr. Best. All right, we got Mr. Best coming up. There we go. We got this. Right. We got this. Hey, guys. What's up? <laughs> What's happening? Not much. Just trying to figure it out, basically. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm kind of caught in the middle with uh, Charm and, you know, what you're saying. It's, it's, it is a tough situation. Um, I, I not, a lot of new players don't really understand what blueprints were all about in the beginning. They were supposed to be uh, very, very difficult to get. Um, and they were supposed to give you kind of like a job in the metaverse. Well, as you can see, that's not working. <laughs> so, um, and I, I, my personal thing, I, I think it's, I want to give power to all the players and decisions of what they want. A blueprint doesn't give that to me. You know, I, I get it. Yeah, I, I can craft something. Um, 
lots of times I'm crafting for free for for people that come to me just so I can promote the game and, and help people progress. I, I can't sell the thing. I'd rather have a rare drop so I can say, oh, I, I can get that, I can build, I can craft it, or I can sell the damn thing. Because I want control. And what I, I'm playing a game, I'm a gamer, but I'm in crypto because I want to make money too. And I want to invest, I believe, in a project. I want to progress as well. So I, I'm, I'm viewing it in all aspects. Um, it's just this present system is broke and we need to figure a way how to compensate or rework the blueprints, but we need to expand where, uh, you know, we're giving, we're giving value to the time that we're in the game. I mean, I'm in the game eight to 10 hours. I'm grinding my ass off and you know, Dan, I've been here in a while. I've, I've lost millions of X, XP because, you know, of changes in the game. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not complaining, but that's, I can't, exp a lot of people come to me and talk to me, come and go and stuff. You know, I, I it's just the facts, the facts. I think we need a clear guidance, you know, a clear plan, and we can't change it because that's just going to piss people off. Uh, I'm going to stick around because I believe in a project. But if we make changes, we need to make sure we have, you know, a clear path of what the hell we're doing here. Yeah. You know, um, or we're just, like I'm saying, like what Charm is saying here, you know, I have 58 blueprints and it could just be gone. So, oh, okay. I, I, I can handle that because I see the, the vision where we want to go, but I can't expect other players to just accept that, uh, spend all this time. Um, you know, other players have spend just as much as time as me. Just haven't been lucky. I have my son, for example, he loves this game. He doesn't play anymore because he only has one blueprint. He's like, forget this RNG. I'm going to put eight hours and get hardly anything out of my time. You know, that's, that's a problem. We need to fix that somehow. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Um, you know, we've done, we've done a lot of talking. Um, I, I like where it's going. We just have to make sure we have a clear set plan. Cause there's, you know, I, I know was other development group. They're gone now. And we had, disagreements and stuff like that that's part of it so you know and we're still in beta but we just have to figure out the best solution where we're giving the power to the players when they get nfts they should decide and we we talked about you know a lot of games like tag c11 or are having the ability to actually upgrade your nfts and make it more valuable so all those cool things we need to start considering um, I guess it's easy for me to say I'm not a developer. It's, that's your hard work <laughs> to figure out how to do that. <laughs> but uh, I just think the more power we can give players that they can decide what they want to do better. So um, that's just my take. I, I, I've been here over a year, Yeah. you know, and I've lost a lot of stuff. Like I got all the, I get everything, you know, I get everything. Yes. I, I have the most PTNs, yep. you know, I have property that are, is useless. Yep. I'm, you know, um, we just have to give value to what people time and money they're putting in because this is more than a game. You know, it, it's an investment. You know, I'm a big gamer, but I was sick of spending. I literally spent hundreds of thousand dollars in games Yeah. and I got nothing out of that, but you know, I had fun and entertainment, but I wanted to get in crypto because Hey, I want to have my money invested too. And not just waste my money away. So that's why, that's why I'm here. That's why my son's here. But if you're asking people to spend all this time and hours and hours and getting very little bit out of that, that's that's a hard pill to swallow, you know. But that's Especially that's, that's they, pretty they, much they the status this, of the game, though. Would you not agree? Yeah, right now, you spend all this time and like like me, I have all this time, I have all these resources, and then I could I could just lose all that. You know, I'm gonna okay, I understand, but we just we can't be we have to stop doing that. Like I was saying about like tools, I bought all the tools, I could use all the tools, and now. We, we change the system. You know, I only can use one tool at a time. I understand what's happening, but things, you know, you know, that's not what was like so-called like promised when you get this. Oh, we're just make we're totally changing things now. And we really need to work on that where we're, we're not doing that. You know, we have a solid um, development path. This is what players can expect if they put the time in, they buy this, and not say, oh, this is not working out. We have to change. Yeah. You know, you know. Follow me. I, I, I get I'm what a, I I'm, get. I'm an I'm an I'm an IT guy. Yeah. 
and we have project plans and I have to write a project, you know, um, we have stakeholders and if they have requirements, I have to build, you know, a design document that says, okay, this is what you want and this is what we're going to do. This is the path. It needs to be like 95% correct. I just can't be changing it in, in mid development or, or mid build. And that's yeah. not going to work, you know, and I feel like that's what's been happening. That's what kind of coach is concerned about. We just can't just all of a sudden, drop something You're yeah. like oh, sorry because this is this is better value which is good yes yeah, true but man i spent all this time yeah all this effort and now it's meaningless so that's my big concern i think the way we're you're talking we want to go is the way we need to go but we need to figure out a way to keep value to like the blueprints and the time that people spent because again somebody can jump it, in it's so tough I, 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 it, it's like, so I tough it, yeah I see it right now, like a lot of new players, if they're in Tamoria and they're farming these bears, this is not normal. These blueprints dropping, like these bears. They don't know that though. This yes. is yeah. not normal at yeah. all. Yeah. I, 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 it literally took me to get my first blueprint drop from a, from a mine, took me level 10. And that's all you could do in the, in the early game, level 10 was the highest. And that was... That was almost a million XP to get to a level 10. Yep. Just think about that. A million. <laughs> I finally got a, a drop. So the drops you're seeing right now is just, it's not normal. It's way, it's way too lucrative right now. So just so the new players can understand, blueprints were way more harder to get. Um, you know, six. I mean, they're still hard to get, just not the combat yeah, ones. Still, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are still, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. That's just my my two cents. Yeah, you know, I'm, I, I'm I, here for the. You know me. I'm here for the players. I'm gonna be honest. Is up front. Yeah. I want I want Immersus to succeed, but you know, I'm in between with Coach and what you're saying, Dan. We just need to accommodate everyone and not just pull the rug on their their progress. You know, making sure that I think the experience we still has some value. I think the experience thing when we moved over to the hundred skills that that was never meant to go that way. I think the combat ones had to go that way because they weren't actually they were kill counters rather than like they weren't set up in the system as experience like the skills were the skills were just lost in a in a in a transition essentially uh with the database so it was also just a you know the thing is is it didn't store how much experience you had it, it stored how much you like it was basically like if you got 10 like 100 experience all right, you grew a level, but then really you'd just be starting from one to something again. We could have probably done something. So that was more just a, a, we were new to what we were doing. We had just taken over the project, obviously. And, uh, you know, I think that's just, that was just lost in the fact that the, the, you know, the people who originally were working on the game just weren't here. And we, you know, were trying to make a change and it just didn't, happen <laughs> properly as far as yep. properties go i mean that's the part of the blockchain that's difficult to manage because um once it's minted right once it's minted it's it's you know it's stored on the blockchain it's immutable it it kind of forces our hands to have to deal with certain things um in a certain way which we have to find ways to do it. And that's why these conversations are happening. It's just, you know, I just don't think blueprints are perfect, right? Like I, I, I could see the game just sitting here forever. You know, we just have a million people, uh, you know, that we can never make enough blueprints ever, you know, and, and it's not like even if we make the blueprints, people are going to find them, right? Like if we put them back to their normal drop rates rather than just the beast drop rates, right? So, you know, there's people just coming in here, gathering resources, treating it like it's a faucet for fate. And then there's no real, there's not fun being built into it. There's no sense of progression. You're kind of just locked in this weird little, um, I don't know. I don't even really know. I mean, and I, it's not like, I think you understand it the most because you've come in here and you've gotten the most blueprints. I, I'd imagine you're up there as far as the people that have had had the most success as far as getting blueprints. Um, it's just, I get the other side of it where things had to change. And 
I feel like the reason that, that they're changing is because we really didn't know the vision that the prior development team had, right? So anything that was in there, it always just, I mean, there's a reason why we almost want to start the project from scratch to, to do the networking thing. There's just, if you were to look at the project, anybody coming in would just be like, what the hell? It looks like they went on the Unity store, took every single plugin, put it in there, used it in certain small little applications to kind of get things through the door. And um, end of the day, like none of it has any, there's not really any cohesiveness between anything. You have properties which make no sense because there's no use case for them uh, in the game environment. So why, you know, so like it's just, but they were minted, right? So now we have this NFT outstanding debt that we need to, you know, address and, and create some type of gameplay around. And I can guarantee in order to make properties worth it, we're going to have to completely change the mechanic again, right? We're going to either have to lock it behind some type of skilling aspect, right? Where people are going to have to like place things out and then there's going to be, have to be some type of buff that's assigned to it. And like, but it's changing how it used to exist, but how it came into the game, these things literally were just put into the game with no schematic, no design, no nothing. It just sounded like the most trendy topic at the time when the crypto market was, you know, uh, kind of going off. It got added in there and then really there was no, there was no vision that I could or had any understanding of. And now that I've kind of taken over, I've got, I need to like figure out, you know, where do things really connect, right? And the blueprint system is the one that I'm attacking right now. There's other things that I'm attacking as well. Um, but the blueprint one just doesn't seem to have a great connection to to uh, this this idea that we're now creating a, a thing where you're progressing, right? We've made we've we've tried to take down paywalls. We've tried to make it you know you know it's now free to play immersus essentially, but it's still difficult. And why is it difficult? Well, I think it's difficult because you know the next piece of content that you'd be able to consume if you're playing the game is a blueprint that is just this completely RNG based thing. And in order to progress, I mean, you're not going to be able to do anything other than just burn the resources that you just got for, you know, the first thing somebody's going to do is they're going to gather a hemp, go to, you know, see what it's worth. It's worth a penny. They're going to be like, oh man, so I have to get a hundred of these to make a dollar. And then they're not even going to really, they're not even going to think about the blueprint part, right? Like I feel like they don't even get to the blueprint part unless they've been educated on the game about how blueprints work in the first place. I mean, I think Monty, you know, comes in with a unique experience in the fact that, you know, Joshua's already provided all, you know, <laughs> guiding principles of how the game works, right? Not go, coming in completely blind, but I think a person that does come in blind and is familiar with crypto games, they're coming in, gathering a hemp, seeing it's worth a penny, seeing that they need to gather 500 or 600 or 700 of these, you know, depending on, uh, you know, the extraction price. Um, in order to do anything else inside the game where I feel like if, if we could provide a, an experience where they can come in, pick hemp, know that they can either extract it for fate if they want to play the game in that way, or uh, hopefully have an experience element to it where you can you know craft a string, be rewarded with experience, see that your stats are going up, hopefully make the experience, experience feel less like a, a faucet for fate and more like you're working towards something to be able to craft bigger, badder things. Um, that 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 is how we return we, we retain a player a little bit better. As far as the NFT debt, I mean, there's things like NF, you know, the blueprints that I still think what uh, Hong Kong uh, said. I still think the suggestion or whoever uh, you know DM'd me the suggestion to make blueprints as a way to get around having a skill requirement is a I think it's accomplishing both feats, right? You're not devaluing a player that found the blueprints because they can do the same thing that they've always been able to do. They've been able to craft the item. But then at the same time, you're providing a natural progression for a new player to come in and feel like, okay, well, I can work on this skill. I can craft this. I can, and hopefully, you know, that, that provides some type of path that they don't feel just completely alienated from the game until they find this this random one in a thousand one in ten thousand one in fifty thousand drop you know depending on on the tier yeah i'd have to agree give, give them the power to the players to be able to uh accomplish things and not 
RNG gods for that. So cool. It, is, it seems like a good uh, a good solution. I mean, when you heard it, what did your what was your initial impression? Yeah, I mean, we need to figure out something to keep blueprints in the game um, for the players, and that seemed like I was thinking like maybe new content. There'll be no blueprints, but I think that'd probably be better. I mean, the blueprint aspect. I, I don't. Stay. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I agree with making the blueprints easier to get in that case. No, I wouldn't make I them easier. Think, I, I would actually think they should be harder because it'd be some like a special thing you found. Like, oh, I can bypass all this time. I may have to get to learn how to craft something. So, oh, I actually think they would, or at least keep them as hard as they are for the gathering side. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. Make a with uh, the monsters make it harder <laughs> it's too easy right now mm -hmm. well it's it's easy for a lot of people not so much for me because all i get is uh shards right now so <laughs> maybe you can have shards where you can but uh, that's what i mean like that's not fun right you, you're you can, gathering all no, these I, resources I, I, you'd be able to craft i'm not having fun at all <laughs> yeah i you would be able to have crafted your set because you had played the game to the point where i feel like you've earned the you've earned the materials enough to be able to make your full set of armor. At this point, you're just grinding because there's just this weird mechanic in the game. And I feel like, I feel like until you start playing it, like as long as you have, like, I just, I don't know. It's just, it's the blueprints is such a hard thing to overcome, but, uh, but it, this, yeah. this is my whole experience. Uh, you know, people, people see, Oh, just has a lot of blueprints. He's lucky. My name's Justin, by the way, Mr. Best is my best is my last name. <laughs> um, I grind my ass off. I mean, a perfect example is trying to get the uh, the iron uh, fishing rod. You know, the, the salmon drop only two blueprints, and it took me seven blueprint drop. And fish is very difficult to get blueprints drops from. I li it literally spent me a month straight grinding for hours and hours, finally getting my uh, rod. Not freaking. Uh, I was making jokes. I was like, is this pond full of uh, bottles, glass bottles or what? Stop throwing glass bottles in this pond because that's all I'm getting are shards. <laughs> and I said, that is, that is not fun. You know, um, I'm spending all this time and I'm not getting value for the time. You know, that is so frustrating. And a lot of people, I know everyone here has to experience some of that. It's the most frustrating. Like right now, I know bears drop, I think it's seven different kind of blue blueprints. I've got five. I need two more, for, you know. My skill is a range. I want to be a ranger, right? I have my bow, and I need to get two more pieces of leather, and I can't get the damn thing. I all I get is shards over and over again. Now, if I could maybe blend my blend those shards into a blueprint, that'd be kind of cool. But um, uh, yeah, it's just not fun. So not not enjoyable gameplay. No. I still think blending the shards in doesn't solve the problem based off of the the iron fishing least, rod example, though, right? Yeah, I mean, but at least. Well, I guess you're getting yeah. At least some value of them. Yeah. Which right now they're meaningless for me. Yeah. I guess I could uh, burn them, but that's that's not. No. That's not useful time either. No. All right. Well, there you have it. That's the best player in the game's opinion on it. <laughs> I didn't pay him to come up here and say this, anyway. but I I get what you're saying. Um, I think. I mean, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm not pissed off. You know, Dan, yeah. if anyone has the right to be pissed off, it's me in this game. Because yeah. I've been, I'm not saying I'm, you got to listen to me. I'm, I love the game. I understand the potential of the game. But the amount of time I put in the game and what I've lost is a lot. Yeah. Money, time, a lot. Yes. Uh, more than anyone, I think. Yeah. Um, so when people bitch, I'm like, no, I understand that a little bit more than you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because uh, I've lost... Tremendous amount of XP, tremendous amount of money investing and stuff. But again, I, I see the vision and the potential of the game. And there's really no other game on the wax chain like this. So, um, yeah, I, but I believe in the project and I believe, you know, I appreciate you, Dan, and what your vision you have. It's just, you know, um, just have to uh, keep at it and listen to the community and, you know, make it uh, profitable for everyone to play the game and uh, have, give them more control. So we'll figure it out. I hope that when I'm making these decisions of how to restructure it so that we do have a little bit more of a foresight as to what we're trying to achieve at the end of it, I hope that is giving you confidence to 
continue to skill, get experience, because right now, you know, what I'm trying to do is put in concrete processes for progression that do not need to be continued to be worked on, right? A lot of the stuff that I'm addressing, they're significant changes because they don't do that. Um, same with properties. Properties are going to obviously have to get touched. And I'm sure we're going to have the same type of discussion that we're having today on properties because right now there's, but it, it might be less of a fight, right? But they're useless. They're essentially blueprints, just useless buildings that, that show that you own something, but they don't provide any real value other than a place to go hang out occasionally. But that needs to, that needs to change. It will get there. It's just, you know, I think we'll, you know, we'll address, you know, properties hopefully soon as well. Uh, but the, yeah. the whole, the whole thing is to get it all to mesh so that it all makes sense. Right. I don't want elements sitting out there that don't, that don't make sense. They don't make sense. And, and, and it's so, and it would be impossible. It, it's almost like they're their own game and it, it I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get too off topic. And I know an, another thing that we, we talked about and you want to do is the whole visibility with drop rates, um, how you're going to be reworking that. And I think that's great. You know, t getting more control of how that actually is working. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be nice because having visibility, knowing, okay, these are the percentages of my, you know, Current drop mechanic doesn't work very well. This next one is... Yeah, it doesn't work. The, like the potions don't work and stuff like that. Yeah. So having visibility, knowing, if okay, if I get this, if I do this, this is what I'm looking at time-wise, well, exactly. investment-wise. That That's big too. At least for me, I want to know, uh, you know, if I get something or if I'm doing something, what are my, what are the statistics here? What am I doing here? Is this is like yeah. one in a million or is this one in, a, one in you know... One in 10,000 and one in 100, that's a big difference for me. And yeah. that kind of gives me some understanding of what I'm doing here. Just like, okay, because how, how many questions? Oh, what's the drop rate for blueprints? Oh, what's the drop rate for this? We have no idea. <laughs> no, and I, I feel stupid that I can't provide that. But that's just how the drop rate calculation works right now is that it's not transparent. I can't even figure it out myself. So I don't know how I'm going to be able to tell somebody else. So now you're just, exactly. and, that, and this is the core progression of the game. I can't even tell you what the chance of you being able to progress is, right? Like that's, it's all, I mean, this is, this is what I'm trying to fix is, is this, all these components that were made to get by, they were acceptable during a hype bear market where everybody was accepting anything, but now we need to fine tune the product a bit and make sure that when somebody comes in, they're having a much more enjoyable experience that there's progression, that things that are out there kind of fit within the realm of, of what we're doing so that there's not these stray aspects that just, you know, don't, don't make sense. But uh, I appreciate you coming up here. We'll, yep, yep. we'll move I actually on here. About to get, I'm about to get kicked out, kicked out of the work, so I have to get out of here. I appreciate uh, you having me up. Um, right, hopefully I would, didn't make things more confusing. No, I think, I think it's good to hear <laughs> everybody's takes on it. All right, guys. I'll see you. Uh, thanks. Um, Bob Smack. I mean, Joshua, do you still want to come up or should I let Bob Smack? Okay. I'm going to let Joshua just come up just real quick here, Bob Smack, just because Joshua has been um, raising and unraising and stuff occasionally here. So uh, let me get you up here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. How's it going? Good, good. Um, yeah. So, I mean, A, I really like this. Uh, it's great. Um, kind of in terms of what uh, Mr. Best have touched on. Um, so I do think, at least my overall personal opinion, I do think blueprints, I was trying to type it out in the general chat and felt like I just wasn't really getting what I wanted to say across well, but I think at least, yes, blueprints uh, are an essential part of the game at this point. Um, and I think there is at least a lot of opportunity to have blueprints be represented within the skills. What I was trying to convey was that like, it may be possible to do some kind of a skill system where like, you've got these individual crafting tiers or trees and at level zero, there's this like 
base uh, free to craft item that like everyone learns. You could even take this one step further and have those crafting trees unlocked through NPCs that give you a quest to actually start the crafting tree. That's a whole nother monster. Mm -hmm. But um, basically you unlock the ability to start that crafting with just something simple that's kind of maybe not the most relevant other than it like gives you the experience in that tree and then to say the bronze bar um to craft a bronze bar maybe you have to have level five in uh smelting smithing whatever you want to call it to craft it but not only do you have to have that you have to have the blueprint to craft it and be level five that way still utilizing blueprints with a skill system and maybe having like other craftables within that that aren't going to be as important or like as financially lucrative, I guess that would be more of a free to craft thing. So that still incentivizes people to go out and grind um, going through the mining to find that blueprint. Um, I, I'm more of an advocate for like raising general blueprint drop rates just from this standpoint. I think it probably needs to be a little more in the middle. Um, it's like, I just got glass yesterday from sand and my digging is level 10. So it took 10 levels to find a blueprint. Um, whereas with the bears, I've gotten four blueprints from them. So bears seem overkill, but maybe a little more frequent than like, you know, I play for two weeks and pull one blueprint finally. Um, some kind of middle ground that still incentivizes the finding of blueprint without making them so impossible to get that it's like, well, I really want to craft that, but it's going to maybe take me a month to do it. Now, like I also said, though, like if from a from a market standpoint with the decks and everything, if um i mean i've i've pulled two bronze like a bronze cabinet from mining rather than like a bronze bar and i'm like okay well cool i can make this cabinet but i can't make bronze bars that's okay because as long as i'm as long as it makes sense for me to buy the bronze bars on the market if i think i can either turn a profit by selling my cabinet or having it staked just as a crafted NFT or hell, if I just want to have one, cause I can be like, Hey, I made this. I can do that. I have that availability. Now, if bronze bars were like, you know, uh, 10 wax tokens for a bronze bar, I'd be like, Whoa, that's way expensive. I'm not going to do that. But it saves me the hassle of having to go grind the, the copper or tin myself. Um, I could commission it out to someone to have it built or buy it on the swap. Um, and then in re in regard to what um, Mr. Best had said about in the, uh, the abundant shards, and I had sent this out in kind of like a general chat the other day, you know, maybe we do something where kind of like he said, where they could be blended, but a system where like a hundred abundant shards could be like turned in for a blueprint you don't own it would make them at least a little more feasible in the existing market but those are kind of my touch points on the system i i like the idea of a scrap of a uh, crafting skill tree um the more little xp tickers and levels and things that i can get out of our an rpg yes excellent but um also like he said you know i also started in web three gaming and stuff to have that uh lucrativeness i guess i would say in terms of like what can like he said it's an investment um and i mean i'm all for uh taking anything i earn and like reinvesting it in the game um i think from from what i've seen in web three gaming and stuff like this is it this is where they need to be looking this is where they need to be and I think we can be that place. Um, but yeah, so those are kind of my points. 
All right. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think you're along the same page as some of the other people. I mean, obviously, blueprints, I mean, they, they obviously play a role because they've played a role throughout the existence of, of the game so far, right? I mean, they are, they're the, they're what we're all used to, um, you know, and, and, and we don't know any other, you know, potential route of progression. It's it right now it's, you come in here, you earn the NFTs and then there's a, a chance that you get the rare blueprint. Um, you know, I think you're, you're still along the lines of like potentially, a, you know, a crafting tree, but it's, it's more focused on, you know, offering them, free crafts I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of what how because it's an interesting take on it right offer them some type of crafting you know route that is free i'm just trying to think of like what those crafts would look like that people would again want to to make them i mean when i think crafts i mean i think people are more often than not wanting to craft for you know, to, to make something that they're going to, to want to use inside the game. So, I mean, I think we have, you know, a, a craft tree that somewhat exists. It's just super fragmented because of, of the blueprint mechanic. Um, and you're kind of having to resort to either the decks or finding somebody else that has the bl- blueprint to complete the whole, you know, craft rather than, you know, a, like this, this clear path of what you have to do to get there. Um, I think the drop rates of, of blueprints, yeah, I mean, we, we need to just first off change the, how the drop rates are calculated in the first place because the, the I think right now the the combat, and I don't know if you've, part, I think you've participated, yeah, I see you there all the time, um, but the, the, I just feel like the combat is giving a terrible representation of how bad blueprints have been. Uh, they're, they're, they're extremely difficult um, to the point where I feel like the last blueprint that wasn't a combat blueprint that I've gotten was like August. So obviously I think bringing down the difficulty is, is a little bit, you know, would kind of have to be somewhat in, in the plan, if that's, that's how they stay, where if we were to add a skill aspect, then there's at least a, a slow route players can take to progress. And then there could be a, uh, a rare blueprint drop that, you know, skips the line for them. Um, which also doesn't devalue the idea of blueprints altogether. Um, yeah, I mean, we still just, I mean, even the, even the, the furniture still needs work. My goodness. There's a lot of NFTs in the game from potions to furniture to, um, I mean the, the apartments and stuff like that. I mean, they just, they need to be, they need to be added into the game so that there is some value that you guys can make. I mean, I obviously know that people are playing the game to, to extract some value as an investor or player or whatever you would you would label them in web three. I just I can't tell if blueprints are helping or hurting the cause is is the the thing. I think I think experience that can be purchased injects value into the ecosystem um, for the player. So that, you know, if there's somebody that wants to just participate in the production skill because they find there's, you know, value for them to craft the item. Your, I mean, the person playing the game should should be able to be rewarded a little bit better for it. Yeah, I mean, I the more that I hear it, the more ideas that I'm getting. I'm I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> I don't know. It just feels like it's going to be a very difficult thing to to make uh, to to satisfy everybody on, and I don't even know if it's a, a battle worth continue to fight. I just don't see how we make the resources that you're gathering in the game have any value other than their extract price, which, you know, is going to be forever diminishing because you're not really working towards anything other than the off chance of a blueprint. And I think that's, that's what I'm trying to overcome is it's less about the blueprints and more that 
the NFTs that you're gathering don't have infinite use case. Um, and yeah, I think that's maybe where more of the issue comes from. But um, yeah, I appreciate you coming up and, and uh, giving your take on it as well. We can br- maybe bring up Bob Smack here. And I'll send you back down here, uh, Joshua, if that's all right. Yeah, thank you. All right. Hey, everybody. How's it going today? Can you hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you. How's it going? So uh, I've been playing a fairly long time, maybe not as long as uh, Mr. Best or some of the other guys, but for a fairly long time. I was absent for a bit, like during, I guess, what we'll call the deer phase. <laughs> I never got any deer skins. Yep. Um, so I think I missed a few things, like like maybe some changes in the atmosphere, the environment, that I don't have a clear picture of what the, everyone else's current attitude toward things is. Um, so I have a couple questions, like... Uh, in the beginning, there was kind of this this idea being preached about you know uh, play to earn and uh, people earning blueprints so that they could craft items for other people and then profit from crafting items for other people. Is that still a focus in the game, or has that kind of faded away? Well, I mean, it's the only option that we have in the game currently, right? I just don't think I don't think it does that. I think that's my issue with it, right? Is that I don't know that I can say that our initial thought on how blueprints would work is achieving what they're supposed to be doing, right? If you get a blueprint, you're not going to craft it, are you? Unless it's for yourself because there's no one on the receiving end that's willing to uh, buy the thing that you're crafting more often than not. Um, And that's, that's the issue that we keep having is I can play the game and I can find a blueprint, but then... It doesn't really, and I think Mr. Best said it well, and you said it well, right? This was supposed to be a mechanic that made you essentially like, uh, it, it, it served as you now all of a sudden having this job in, in the world to craft this item for everybody, right? But that's, right. that's not what ends up happening, right? Is nobody right. reaches out to anybody because nobody wants to spend, uh, <laughs> you know, nobody wants to spend to buy your item, right? Because they can achieve it themselves. Yep. So let me, I have two thoughts on that. One, we were told that it would be impossible for anyone to get all the blueprints. Correct. Which it still is quite impossible. (laughs) It's it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. But there were a couple people who came pretty damn close. Um, So my thought is, and everyone's going to kick me for saying this, I know. But what I think really needs to happen is that there needs to be some sort of limiting factor where you it's programmed into the base code that you cannot get all the blueprints so that it forces us to trade and have commerce. And I know just like everyone else, I was hoping to get all the blueprints and that eventually you'd figure out the code to lock it down. So people couldn't get all the blueprints, but I'd be the one guy who had them all. I think we were all secretly thinking that. But uh, I don't. I honestly don't think we can let that happen. I think there needs to be a limitation on how many blueprints go out. I think it should be a floating dynamic number based on how many active accounts are currently playing. So you know we need people to make things, and if everyone who has that blueprint to make a certain item is gone or no longer active, then the blueprint needs to become available to achieve again. But there needs to be like maybe. I don't know, a hundred total possible you can get of, you know, silver bar. I know that's useless right now, but you know, maybe, maybe a steel bar, maybe there's only a hundred ever minted, right. For that blueprint, unless the population gets above a certain number or enough active accounts that have that blueprint disappear and and are no longer active. You (laughs) feel what I'm saying? I do. I mean, I, you're approaching the, you're, you're going back to pretty much the root reason they were 
made, but then putting a limit on it based off of the amount of players. I'm, I'm just trying to think of how that changed. Like, again, I think some of this is not just purely the blueprints. It still comes back to the fact that I just think resources are only used once with blueprints, right? I think that's, that's still part of this that I'm trying to figure out is if you become okay, the, so yeah, if you become the profession guy, right? Technically, it doesn't right. matter if there's a hundred or if there's one. One guy can make NFTs for everybody, right? It, in theory. Huh? Yeah, in theory. So, but that, that's kind of, you know, <laughs> if you want the item, you're going to get it, right? And at this point, I, I would love to know how many people have blueprints that are actually charging the person that's acting them. Like, because more often than not, the guy's coming in there, has all the resources, has all the materials for the craft. They're coming in and ask you to make the craft. And then... I don't know how many people are sitting there and going to like end the person that's asking for the craft is going to accept this offer where the, the guy with the blueprint is going to be like, yeah, I'll make it for you for like 5k fate, right? Like it feels weird to ask for that 5k fate fee when like you just have it. I mean, you, you're the guy that's supposed to be making it for me, right? Like I'm sure it works for a period of time, but as soon as the second guy with the blueprint comes out and undercuts your price, then you're just going to be right. in this this battle where it gets down to free again, and that's what happened has, right. I mean, and that's what has happened, right? So then the profession just doesn't exist anymore, right? Like the like it's not a profession; right. it's just a tedious thing that prevents people from progressing um, and getting that item, which means that now we just have like a few people that have to receive DMs because nobody else can progress if they do it. And then that just feels more like you're fulfilling this weird. Now it does create a sense of community, right? I did like that aspect of it where uh, players will have to interact, you know, more personally with each other in order to kind of all mutually move and progress throughout the game. But it just, right. it just feels like these weird, you know, so, okay. Yeah. So to uh, reveal a little bit of my past, <laughs> yep. I, I got this, uh, I got, the 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 pass i got the pass to play the beta pass yes from a friend right which was the the intended design to the way things were supposed to happen and i started playing just on a lark i was like what the hell let's try it you know mm -hmm. and then i was like mm, this looks interesting it might be worth something you know one of the few wax projects that actually had a playable game and i said you know what there's a there's a, a steel pickaxe out there for like oh i don't remember how much i must have paid like a hundred dollars for it like a hundred dollars for actual cash yeah I paid for that, that steel that steel pickaxe, and uh, you know, um, I figured that in, in the in the long run, what would happen is as new players came in and wanted that awesome item they couldn't get a hold of, they'd pay for it in in a, in a bull market. Yes. Right. right now they're not going to because it's a bear market, right? Yep. But at the same time, if if everyone knows they can eventually get every blueprint. They will not buy items. Even if there's that jerk out there undercutting you when you put it up for 150 wax and he goes and says, I'm going to put it up there for 145. I see what you're saying. No okay, one, so that, no that, one that is the anything. other aspect of what you were saying that I kind of missed there is the fact that we have to make yeah. it also impossible for somebody to get every single item. Yes. Interesting. Yes, and I know people are going to hate me for saying that, but I really think that's the only way this game is going to work long term. There needs to be some sort of programmed limit that, you know, let's say that if, if I, I don't know, maybe there'd be specialties. Maybe maybe you would force people to select a specialty or maybe maybe it would just silently go, well, you got the, the, the iron pickaxe. You can't get steel pickaxe, right? That way it forces you to trade with someone else. I don't know, some, something along those lines. I know people are going to hate it, but. I mean, what you're saying That's makes I... complete sense to me, right? It, it does what I'm trying to achieve with creating a market again for resources, right? Because it does, it, it, it requires exchanging of, of assets again, right? It, it creates trade right. and the fact that you can't just, the progression isn't just grind for months for you to be able to do it yourself, right? Just randomly, it's right. right? It's, it's. Which honestly, what everybody's trying to do right now, because I am too. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah, and you're trying to find all the blueprints, but you know, it's just. But then again, ah, man, I, I can't help but think, 
that that still doesn't matter because of the decks. I feel like... Possibly. Yeah. The Dex has changed things, and maybe we haven't calculated all the possible ways that it has changed things. The Dex things, is but. so new, yeah. So, the Dex makes the current grind feel redundant of, of blueprints. I mean, the grind is you can have whatever you want, just not the ability to make whatever you want. And it's... Right. it's you know, I... So, I... I I, I have two more thoughts and then I'll, and then I'll shut up and go away. Yeah. Um, my other thought is that right now our focus is on the blueprints because that's the only thing to do right now. Yeah. Right. I'm not, I'm not trying to bust your balls. I'm just saying, no, you know, no, once, just once, we, <laughs> once we have yeah. other stuff to do, you know, like missions and, and, and quests and stuff, once there's a storyline to follow and do something in the game, people will worry less about the blueprints. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the other thing I was thinking is, um, um, oh crap, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh man, I totally went blank. I'm sorry. <laughs> Muslim's trying with the storyline over there with his, his quest. <laughs> But um, yeah. Oh, 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 the the re the reusing. Okay, so like, yeah. okay, so I haven't used like my my bronze bar blueprint in like a long, long time. Yeah. Right, because once I got all my all my uh, stuff upgraded, I didn't need to anymore. But yeah. you know, now that we've got now that we've got um, armor, I have to use it again. So it finds a new use case, right? And I assume the same thing would be with the weapons. You know that you have the bronze blueprint, the steel blueprint, the iron blueprint. Yeah. You're going to need to use those again as you upgrade your weapon. Yeah. So it's not a total loss. We just need more development. Yeah. But here's the other side of that, right? Is the way that I see that right now is that I see that as just these small little pump and dumps, right? These are, these are we're releasing a blueprint. And for a period of time, what you're saying absolutely does happen, right? For a period of time, these resources are all of a sudden like hot again because they're used to, to craft the, the, the weapons um, and people or, or armor or whatever, right? And then once right. the supply is met, they go directly back down sure. to zero because they don't have the same <laughs> usability again, right? They, right, it, right. They just, they sit there. And then they wait for this, you know, whatever the next thing is for however long that takes. Um, but it, but I think the other part that's an issue is the extract part, right? Where we're talking about bronze, right? Uh, iron's a completely different situation, right? We're never even really getting to bronze because everybody's dealing with tier one stuff because nobody's, you know, encouraged to like... Like, it, imagine if you were getting more experience, if you were crafting bronze bars and you were getting experience and the experience that you got from crafting your bronze bars was superior to crafting, you know, uh, or iron bars was superior to crafting bronze bars, right? Well, okay. all of a sudden you're going to be repeat using iron ore more frequently. Um, and you would actually be going after iron, right? Right now you're probably, I mean, when's the last time you think you, you, you mined an iron ore, right? I feel like everybody's still just gathering tier one because tier one is the thing that's worth gathering. Like if you, you might stumble right. across a iron ore, but you're not sitting there mining iron ore because, you know, there's no reason for you to. I, I think that's the other part of this that, that I, I, I'm just kind of stuck on is like, I want to be able to give every item some value and it feels like the only way i can give them value is if i can assign experience to those items um right the reason why equipment is somewhat valuable now is because they have stats right they have stats they affect your ability to perform inside the game and for that reason it makes sense first off when you're killing things you're earning experience all right progression you're leveling up you're able to do more damage you're able to hit more frequently you're able to block and then the reason why you want to have you know, the, the, you, you want to craft into, you know, the equipment is because it's going to effectively, you know, determine how effective you are at, at playing the game. And that's the same thing that I would like to do with, with, with 
the gathering and crafting side of the game, right? To kind of fill in that gap. Because right now I feel like we're missing this 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 skill thing that actually matters, right? The, the skill right now that matters is you kind of just gather, you reach level 10, and then you'd have no way to get your upgraded tool unless you sell the tool to the decks and buy the upgraded one, right? Or else you get super lucky and somehow get all the blueprints needed to... But you can't, right? Because you can't get all the blueprints from just mining. You need to get the bronze, the, the birch uh, plank from from woodcutting. So that means you're forced into buying a second tool to to get it, right? And then once you've somehow accomplished this mission impossible that we send you on in tier one, you know, you've already either, you know, by the time you do it, you just craft it once, right? You, 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 you use, uh, what, like 10, 10 tin, 10 copper. You've probably gathered 500 tin in copper, right? You've, you've cut down a million trees. Um, you have, you know, 100, 200 birch uh, logs and you need 10 of them, right? Then you craft your pickaxe and now you've reached level 10. All you can really do is mine iron, but why would you mine iron? Because tier one was better, right? So now every, like there was no reason to do anything that you did. Um, and I think that's, 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 that's why I want to kind of feel like, I'm trying to think of ways to make it feel like the resources that you're gathering is going to, you know, directly impact in, in essentially an experience rate, how efficiently you do things, right? Like if the most efficient route to get to being able to craft something isn't staying at tier one, but is actually getting to steer, you know, actually playing tier two gameplay then that's what I want to encourage, right? And then if, if the most efficient way to get to tier three stuff is playing, you know, well, yeah, like the most efficient way to get to tier two is play tier one. Most efficient way to get to tier three is play tier two. And just like, that's kind of what I want more than just us stuck in, stuck in this, this, this weird thing where you never, you never get out of tier one because there's no progress, like there's no progression element to, uh, to crafting. It's just this blueprint me mechanic that you're not, you're not moving forward with. You're just kind of navigating, right? Like it's, <laughs> I Let think. Let me ask you this. Yeah. If, we, if we've got this like skill, this, uh, this, this skill tree around crafting, right? A, a progression system. What is it progressing to? What are we, what are we aiming for? Yeah. I mean, essentially you're, you're aiming to be able to be, able to craft the things that you need to play the game. So this would be in theory, as a new player, you come into the game and you are picking hemp. You go ahead and instead of, I mean, you could burn it for fate in order to get the energy that you need to craft, but let's say you're crafting the string. Okay, so now you're crafting the string. I, ideally, you would be crafting the string and we would be creating a production skill that's associated with it. This could be like, I don't know. This would this would be, uh, you know, this could be a crafting skill, right? And maybe underneath this the crafting skill tree, a player is crafting string over and over and over again, and they're gaining experience, right? And as they gain that experience, they maybe reach level three in gathering, right, or something like that. And maybe at level three or, or level three crafting, they're able to now actually craft the recipe for something that allows them to like and i'm putting everything out here like i would even consider like rusty tools be craftable like this is what i mean by like putting this this type of gameplay in here but a lot or, or maybe you can even like get in and start doing any of the resources um like maybe you can work towards crafting up to, to craft your rough rusty tool right rather than just straight buy it okay. but Basically, the, the, the idea would be that you could level up the skill, eventually reach a point where you can craft it as long as you have the other materials. You're going to have to, you're going to have to navigate, making sure that you have the materials that you need in order to make the craft, right? So if you're right. only picking hemp, you may not be able to make the, the rusty pickaxe if it requires, you know, something that, that you can't gather, but at least you've, you've progressed to the point where, okay, well, I've worked I can get this, I could start crafting these tools if I get the necessary resources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to either, you know, buy, trade, sell my hemp 
to acquire the necessary resources in order to craft my tool that now that I have this tool, I can now actually be getting better experience rates because I can gather, you know, not just string, but maybe now I can, you know, maybe I unlocked a, a weapon. So now I can start like tanning leather, you know, maybe that's part of the crafting tree as well, right? So now, now you're taking string, you're gathering belt, bear pelts, you're using string and the leather to, to get better experience rates so that you can get up to level 10 or something, right? And now level 10 in, in crafting allows you to, you know, make the leather boots. So you make yourself a pair or of leather you boots. Want a generic singular crafting skill that just lets you craft everything. I was thinking you wanted like a crafting skill per per development tree. You would have you would have different. This is I'm giving an example. This is this would be okay, one okay. of multiple right. skills. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to show you a lot uh, like a a different way to see the progression of the game. That's a little Real bit of concept. Yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. But it's obviously so, so early and we're not to that point where I've designed at that point, but you know, I'm just, I'm trying to create a way for a player to come in and feel like they can play the game because I feel like there's more value in getting a player to stay in and play the game than, than, than there is in just like, you know, a blueprint currently. Right. Like I, I don't think a right. blueprint is, is the you know the end well, all be all of keeping a it's, guy it's in not the game. it's not but it does make people feel invested yes it does it does but why would why would a skill that accomplishes the same thing not not feel a little bit more rewarding something that a player it might, it, yeah. might, it could yeah could because one a blueprint could be gotten in three seconds after your first shop or three months we don't know and that's why i feel like the blueprint is great for rare drops um, right. So like, I, I think a rare drop will always achieve the same sense. If you know, it's rare and you know what the drop rate is, whether it's a blueprint or it's like the, the most epic sword in the entire game, right. It's going to have the same impact because you're going to know, um, you know, that it's, that it's rare or this material that you've been wow, hunting down cool. to be able to craft something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was kind of a feeling of elation where I finally got the, uh, the the glass bottle blueprint after like hell, like a year of trying to get the damn thing. <laughs> it was a very rewarding feeling to finally get it. Trust me, I, I when you get the blueprint, it's super super good. I mean, I, but I feel like we can recreate that set that that sensation. Uh, without it always just a being a blue stick of paper, right? I think it would be cool to see, you know, a cool object pop up on the floor that's not just the same thing over and over again. Um, sure. Yeah. Like if you're killing a, a boss that has, you know, a piece of identifiable armor on it and it's drop table. The armor instead of the instead of the blueprint. Instead of the blueprint, exactly. Right, I would, because I would be, I would be okay with that. I think a lot of people would. But at the same time, I think we can, based off of the DM that I got, I still think we can incorporate blueprints to achieve the same exact thing that are, that, that these crafting skills. Like, I don't think blueprints have to go away. It could just be this RNG element to avoiding a level requirement to do something. Right? If you think like it's a, a shortcut, if you get lucky, is what you're saying. Exactly. Right. Let's let's say it requires okay. level okay. forty in a skill, and there's a monster that drops it that you can just kill over and over and over again. If you want to spend thirty hours doing that, hopefully in those thirty hours you've probably got enough resources to craft up to it so you can actually continue playing the game. But you know, at the same time, let's say you first kill, get the thing that allows you to 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 craft it. Um, then you know you might have saved yourself you know, 30 hours of gameplay, right? You, you you unlock the blueprint, but the blueprint really doesn't do anything because there's going to be people that have level 40 crafting that can craft the items already, right? So, but blueprints right now don't do that anyways. We've already kind of established that, right? Like the whole profession thing did not work the way that we thought it or hoped it would. Um, so, I don't do we, know. Do we still want there to be professions where people like craft swords or craft pickaxes do we still want that in the game 
I mean, does everyone else want it? Well, it just depends how much we want to break these skills up, right? Like they could, it could be six. I mean, it could be, you could pair the, the gathering skills with a production skill, right? So let's say mining becomes smithing, right? Or wood chopping becomes carpentry or something, right? That, or you break them up even further, right? Like you might be able to, you know, I mean, I don't know how far we break the, the, the crafting tree up, but, um, yeah, maybe you're, you're doing carpentry and once you've reached level five in car carpentry, you can either continue on the path of carpentry or you can take, you know, a bow fletching, you know, route if you wanted to. And then maybe these things progress, you know, because obviously it is more sci-fi. Eventually maybe these bows progress into, you know, creating guns or something like that. Right. Like, I don't know, but, yeah. um, that's, I don't know. I just, I think we need more experience. I also see what Muslim's saying. I mean, I think durability could, could help a lot, right? Does durability achieves the reusability of resources? Um, oh, so my pickaxe eventually breaks like Minecraft and I got to rebuild it. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Right. It still achieves the okay. same thing. Yeah. Okay. But do you want to do I guess. Yeah. The, the thing about durability that's difficult is changing the mutable attribute of an NFT. Uh, in order to do that, we have to interrupt gameplay. Uh, you can't just, you can't really just, I mean, you either have to deposit the item into the application, right? So you're no longer actually holding on to it. Um, and then it, then it's minted with the, the mutable attribute when you take it back out or the mutable attributes Could up there. You, okay, but well, even though it has immutable attributes as an NFT, couldn't you change the way it behaves in the game without altering the NFT? Yep, yep. You know, for this account, this item is currently broken until a repair occurs or yeah something like that. i mean i guess the only thing that really comes becomes an issue there is you just wouldn't know what you're buying off the secondary market right you wouldn't know oh. if the nft is and then because of how the de decks works you know you you could be just randomly at you know just at random yeah. the, the the nft that you take off the decks is is one that's not repaired um well, that'd be assuming that it changes the immutable attributes of the NFT itself. Yeah. I'm saying the fact that the the bronze pickaxe needs to be prepared stays with I see what you're saying. I, I see what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So if I sell my bronze pickaxe, I'm not screwing somebody over. Yep. It's it's more your account's current status of a bronze pickaxe. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and that would keep people from cheating too. That way, if they have to repair a bronze pickaxe, it doesn't matter if they buy. A, well, I don't know. Maybe if they did buy a new one, maybe that would solve it. I don't. I don't know. That could be decided later. But you see what I'm saying? Yeah, durability. Okay. The only thing I would absolutely be against is losing the NFT outright from a durability issue. Yeah, no, I don't think we would. That I would be completely against yeah i mean i don't even know how we'd be able to pull something like that off or if it's even possible right but all right no i mean i think i think this gives me at least a place to start as far as you know a design document i mean with based off of feedback i think we can present it in multiple ways based off of everybody's takes on it um, I mean, it may just be that we keep it as is and just, you know, just, yeah, I mean, we could just keep it as is, but yeah, I mean, it, I think it was good to just have the discussion. I mean, I think having some, some vote on it seems like the most fair way to do it. Um, so maybe that's where we get to with it, but, um. Yeah, I mean, I think we need to actually design the content. I think the big thing that Mr. Best said is like, we can't just keep making things and then having to, 
revert them. You know, we need to be making sure that if we implement something into the game, it's it's not there for three weeks. You know, it's there for the lifetime of the game or three months or whatever, um, which is, trust me, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm not trying to come back and have to revisit things over and over again. Um, and that's, that's really, really it. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you coming up on stage. I appreciate everybody for coming up and, and providing input. You know, I think it, it's nice to be able to hear everybody else's thoughts on, on things as far as making decisions about the game. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the next course of action for me is just to kind of, I mean, I wrote down everything that you guys said. Um, so, you know, take that into consideration you know, probably put forth a couple different different options and maybe do another one of these stages, you know, with some more fleshed out plans and, and see if it is even something that we want to pursue or if it's a waste of time. I'm just basically trying to find something to do while we're, we're moving on to another networking, uh, you know, uh, solution for ourselves. But uh, all right. Thank you so much, guys. I will talk to you later.